What's going on everybody? Cold front is hit. It is wet. It is nasty. Wondering why I'm doing this review outside as well for one. I prefer to do them outside, but with a newborn baby, it's hard to keep quiet. And while the missus is sleeping and I'm taking over and dealing with the other babies, this is the only place that I can do it right now. So right now my phone is positioned on a bone. Yes, a bone. I collect bones. Yes, any type of bones. If I find them, they're mine. I keep them. Anyways, it is sitting on top of a bone against <clears throat> the wood of my porch here. <laughs> and sitting on the bone in a flower pot pot. So this is what we're working with. Oop. Spilling coffee. More of a tea drinker, but coffee is nice when it's freezing outside. Well, at least for Texas. It's probably not even cold at all to anyone else that lives anywhere else. <laughs> Anyways, today I wanted to talk a little bit about Copenhagen history. That's Copenhagen, which, as y'all know, I love Red Seal, also made by the same company. What I wanted to talk about a little bit about Copenhagen history just because I love Copenhagen. It's my favorite out of any other snuff out there. Uh, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people do like this, uh, like Copenhagen, but a lot of people also talk about how it doesn't hold in the mouth, which I think that that's this unexperienced user saying that or someone that's not used to it. I personally think Grizzly, uh, Grizzly snuff, Grizzly tobacco. Personally, I think Grizzly is a little bit too dry for me. Um, it does, it is moist sometimes, um, uh, even if I get a fresh can, I just don't care for it. Now, a lot of people say Red Seal is really dry, and um, it is to a an certain extent. It's, it's drier than most moist snuffs. I mean, if you get a super fresh can, uh, like this one, uh, sell by November 29th, 2020. So, I mean, it needs to be bought pretty quick, but uh, even if you buy a super fresh can, it is drier than most moist snuffs, but in my opinion, compared to other dry snuffs that I've tried, for example, in my opinion, Grizzly is on the drier side. Um, it can be very moist, but when I do dip Grizzly, um, it moistens up in the mouth too, but I feel like Red Seal actually moistens up very nice in the mouth. Once it's in there and you get, you start salivating, uh, it really starts to moisten up enough to, to where you need to spit, but you don't have to spit as much with it, but I think that's the, the, the deal with it. It's, it is drier, so you spit less, but you're still getting that nicotine content. doesn't mean that it's, that you have to like it, but anyway, so. I'm going to read an article, um, just a little bit about uh, George Wyman, uh, who started the snuff. Uh, I found this on pittsburghmagazine.com. Uh, I just googled some stuff, just wanted to read a little bit about the history. Because most people just pick their flavor and their brand and that's it. And they dip it for years, but they don't know shit about it. I personally, I just like knowing about this stuff. But I thought this was interesting. In the early 1820s, local tobacconist George Wyman put together a new blend of chew that he called Copenhagen snuff. Widely recognized as one of the America of one of America's earliest consumer products with a brand name. In its famous round cans, the early <coughs> output from Copenhagen was branded as unrivaled for quality and flavor. Plenty of people found it found pleasure in a pinch of this P Pittsburgh product. Wyman's success with Copenhagen enabled him to expand. He renamed the company Wyman & Bros, built, uh, built a retail store on Smithfield Street downtown, a six-story brick factory on Donquesne Way, and an eastern office on Broadway in New York City. Early industrial Pittsburgh was also re-owned re re for its manufacturing of cigars. President Ulysses Grant had his personal brand manufactured here. All across America, baseball players developed an infinity for snuff and chewing tobacco, but Pirates great Honus Wagner is still remembered for not wanting his image sold without a tobacco, a tobacco product. His reluctance uh, inadvertently 
inadvertently, inadvertently created the most valuable baseball card of all time. In 1922, the Wyman, uh, Wyman Brut & Co. became United States Tobacco. Today, Copenhagen is made by U U.S. Smokeless Tobacco Co. based in Virginia. Even now, the company proudly traces its history back to Wyman's tobacco shop in Pittsburgh, obviously, because um, they still have the... Right there, that W. That W. That's uh, basically for George Wyman. And that's his little, his little logo. But, um, uh, anyway, a little bit more history about it. Um, uh, oh, missed the spittoon. During the 19th century, chewing tobacco was distributed through the United States by George Wyman. Uh, Way, or Wayman. Wayman was the inventor of Copenhagen snuff, and after his death, Wayman and Bros was acquired by the American Tobacco Company. It is today, is known today, blah, blah, blah. You smoked it. We already read that. Okay. Uh, George, Wy George Wayman's, uh, uh, was the father of two sons, William and Buckworth. After their father regained control of Tobacco Company in, a, in the 1860s, he gave it to their sons when it was named Wy Wayman and Sons Tobacco. Following their father's death, the brothers officially adopted the name Wayman Bros Tobacco in 1870s. But um, uh, some interesting stuff about about this also. U.S. Smokeless Tobacco Company, formerly United States Tobacco Company, manufactures smokeless tobacco products, notably dipping tobacco, but also chewing tobacco, snus, and dry snuff, and is subsidiary of Altria. Altria, or Altria, however you say it. Anyways, what that is, is uh, that's a side company by Philip, by Philip Morris. If y'all don't know, and y'all think that these other big brands don't own your tobacco products, they do. Like, for example, you wanted to get away from cigarettes, you don't want to support them, well, you still are. Because uh, Philip Morris uh, owns all that shit. Same with, um, uh, like, Grizzly. I want to say that Grizzly, uh, the, uh, not Philip Morris, but, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, what's the name? It's the brand that owns uh, Camel cigarettes. Anyways, the people that own Camel, that are that company that owns Camel, I can't think of the name of it, so don't forget used to be a cigarette smoker so I know this stuff but anyway uh, they own Grizzly they own American uh, American Snuff Co so you have these two still top tobacco brands or cigarette cigarette companies that own this Philip Morris owns Copenhagen basically in a sense because uh, that's why uh, I want to say where is it I don't know, there's this, I want to say, what, Skull Bandits? Uh, oh, Rooster. Rooster, for example. Rooster, uh, until 2009, when Philip Morris, he dis, uh, discontinued it. So, I mean, the company uh, produces several varieties of dry snuff as well, all kinds of stuff like that. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the history about it. Um, uh, I mean, they're also uh, in brand with uh, Skull which Skull was one of the first moist uh, tobacco manufacturers to offer dipping tobacco in pouches. Skull Bandits, released in 1983, were marketed in the UK in the 1980s, but the carcinogenic uh, tobacco pouches were banned amid public protests. So it's a damn shame that we can't all uh, just share our tobacco in trade and it not be a big deal. Because I know that the UK, and uh, unless you go to uh, the Stoker's store, uh, in, I guess, Germany or Denmark, or I don't know where, they have some, I know they have some or one, uh, Stoker's, uh, stores in, uh, like, maybe Scandinavia or Germany, I know they don't get it, uh, it's hard to get, I believe they do have a Stoker's store in the UK, I could be wrong, but I want to say that they don't, uh, it's just, it's very hard for them to get dip over there. Just like it's very hard for us to get dry stuff over here. It's, our stuff, our stuff is moist stuff. That's what we do. So it's, it's harder to get it over here. It's just a damn shame. Because it'd be very nice to get uh, dry snuff uh, access. It'd be nice to have access to that earlier. God, I'm actually cold out here. <laughs> damn, coffee's already cold. Anyway, but I thought it was interesting. Uh, me personally, I think this is the, the best brand uh, you could ever get. 
out of any other brand. Yes, there are other dips I like. I like Stoker's. I love Stoker's. Stoker's is one of my favorite brands. As a budget dip, it is quality tobacco. And if I didn't have Copenhagen, I still dip Stoker's. But as far as like nicotine level and all that, I mean, if you are a moist, if you, I'm not saying that you have to have this, <laughs> but I am saying that this is by far the best product you can get. Uh, out of dipping tobacco in my opinion it doesn't mean that it's the that it has to be the best to you it doesn't mean that you have to go out and dip it but I am telling you this is the top-notch quality the, the quality of the tobacco the processing everything is is top-notch about it other than the co only complaint that I ever really hear is that Copenhagen long cut isn't long cut which it is it's just the way they produce their long cut. Yes, I get you get floaters, it moves around. You don't have to like it. You don't have to, it doesn't have to. I'm not trying to sell you anything. <laughs> uh, it's all about uh, habitual.